Welcome back, Commander Shepard. Hi, I'm Citanium, and this is Citanium Mine. Once again, talking about Space Ember. And for the holidays, I thought I would give everyone a real special treat. Something that I have been meaning to talk about for a while now. The Mass Effect Trilogy. Specifically, the Legendary Edition. This is the first time that I've actually played all three of the games in their chronological order at once. So, let's just start with our checklist, huh? Microgravity. Um, no, no, not, not really. Um, uh, oxygen meter? No. It, these, these really aren't those kinds of games. Uh, aliens. Oh yeah, there's a lot of aliens. There's, it's like the whole game is just aliens. It's aliens all the way down. Lasers. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of laser weapons. A lot of energy weapons in general. Yeah, that, that counts. Uh, robots. Oh yeah, there's entire races of robots in this. Uh, let alone, like, actual, like, robot robots. So yeah, that, that counts. Uh, spaceships. Oh yeah, I mean, there's lots of spaceships. I guess, this, yeah, no, you even pilot spaceships, because the Normandy, there's sections where you can pilot the Normandy around the map, at least. Uh, I'm saying yes. Uh, weird food. You know, they never really got into what you order at the bars, although some of the drinks sound a little bit dangerous and have some odd colors to them. Uh, no. No, I'm, no I, can't really I can't really claim weird food. Not that they, they specify in the game. It's not a focal point. You don't eat stuff. The Mass Effect trilogy is a real landmark for Bioware. Uh, they had previously done a bunch of RPGs, uh, including doing Knights of the Old Republic, which is one of the best games, like, ever. But then they went and made a space epic all of their own, which was the, the Mass Effect series, and they said, what we're going to do is create three games, and what you do in one game is going to influence the next, which is going to influence the next um, in, like, a, a three-part trilogy. And that's very, very exciting. Whether they pulled it off or not, well, we're getting to that. Basically, in the first game, you are introduced to Commander Shepard, and you are introduced to a lot of the main players that are going to be in this trilogy. Like Garrus and Rex and Tali and Liara, and then one of those two humans. Uh, we, they're there. Anyway, the point of the matter is, they are your main crew and an introduction to the world as it stands. The story starts where you are investigating a Geth disturbance. The Geth are a mechanical species, uh, an artificial intelligence race. And find out that this character named Saren has become what you eventually realize is indoctrinated, and they've been indoctrinated by a Reaper. You don't really know that necessarily in the first game until toward the end, but this talks about a much larger problem down the line. And I think that this is what's really interesting about this series, is that you start learning about the universe and the way it works and the different races therein, these different species, and then from there, you get like a good foothold in the first game of their interactions and the history therein, because they have a lot of history. Uh, the, what happened with the Krogan and with the Genophage, which limited their ability to breed and the reasons why this artificially created genophage was was made by some of the other like council races like the salarians and the reason that they did that and the animosity that these species have towards each other is fleshed out in this first game but isn't really resolved until the third so you're learning about these aspects about what happens with the Quarians and then the Geth, which they built, and the war that they have now been fighting. And you learn about the Migrant Fleet, where they, the Quarians lost their homeworld to the Geth, and now they're, you know, just sailing through space. You learn from Liara 
about Protheans and about legends of like the Reapers and, and what happened there and why did the Protheans die out and all of this stuff. A lot of very ancient lore, thousands and thousands of years of lore that Mass Effect really sets up. And you, as Commander Shepard, are sort of getting a little bit more into the nuts and bolts of how this world works. Some stuff that Shepard already understands and knows that you as the player are learning, but then some things that Shepard is discovering along with the other characters. So the first game is really interesting in that, because there's all of this lore and history that you have to catch up on, but then there's a point where all of the characters are learning about stuff they didn't know, and you get to go on that journey with them and learn as they go. That first game also really does something interesting, which is that there is a specific reason why you meet all of the characters that are your companion characters in the game, because they're all directly involved. You, you have to find out what happened with Saren, and Saren was this specter. He was working as, like, their spec ops, basically, for uh, the Citadel. So you need to find records of it. Well, then you need to go to CSEC, the Citadel Security. And who's the agent that you're meeting there? Well, it's Garrus Vicarian. So that's how you meet Garrus, because he was a CSEC agent. You've, you've got to make contact with this shady underworld. So you end up coming across Rex. And Rex is like a mercenary at that point. You, um, you need to learn about the Geth. Well, good news, there's a Quarian that's on her pilgrimage, and that's Tali. Uh, you need to learn about the Protheans. Well, Liara is, uh, you know, someone who studies the Protheans. You're collecting these people, not just because they happen to be around, but because they are directly there to explain to you different aspects of the storyline. And also, because they're from different key races in this society also about the history that they have therein, and their interactions with each other even suggest that there's a lot of animosity and some pretty bad blood between several of them for perfectly reasonable reasons. Something they set up in the first game is this Paragon Renegade system. It is something that goes through all three games, and it is basically your morality. It's the light side, dark side, it's the good and evil side of this game where you make choices, and they lead you down one path or another path. Now, the first time I played this game, I went down the Paragon path, and this time I also went down the Paragon path. For some reason, I have trouble doing the Renegade path with these games. I think it's mostly because when I'm playing Commander Shepard, who's supposed to be this very, at least in my mind, supposed to be this very regimented, military character. Going off book and just starting to shoot people because they annoy you and all of that, which the Renegade Path essentially has you do, like, for for reasons that they sort of justify after the fact, like, well, we didn't know if we could trust him, so I shot him. They try to make it sound like it's a, a logical conclusion, but it really isn't. Um, if you're playing as a character like that that's been in charge of trying to figure out what happened with Saren's betrayal or what's happening with this Geth activity and then later what's happening with the Reapers. No one would have put a shepherd in charge that just randomly was like, well, you're in my way, bang, and shoot people. That doesn't make sense. They wouldn't have tried to raise Shepard up to be as important as they are if they acted like that on a regular basis. So you have to assume that they had this really stellar track record and starting with these games, all of a sudden just became an, an absolute jerk to everyone and risked the safety of billions for their own personal vendettas and such. And it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's not like in Knights of the Old Republic where the light side and the dark side, you know, you, you can obviously be a dark side character and, and strive for power. 
or you could be a light side character and, and strive for balance. But Commander Shepard isn't looking for power in either of these scenarios. Commander Shepard needs to figure out how to stop this existential threat to the known galaxy one way or another. Some of these choices are sort of shallow. Most of them are. The reason I say that is because whether I choose Paragon Path or Renegade Path, uh, no matter if I'm just at an absolutely disagreeable, curmudgeonly uh, jerk, uh, homicidal idiot, or whether I am an astute, diplomatic, measured soldier and politician, the outcome of my decisions is almost always the same. There are a few cases where it will be life or death for certain characters. But, for the most part, whether I respond in a very negative way, or an aggressive way, or whether I expand in a really measured or positive way, the result ends up being the same. I get the same information, the story moves forward in the same way, and not a ton happens that's different. And I suppose that would be one of my big criticisms of the trilogy as it stands, uh, is that it really felt like there needed to be more consequences to my actions as time went on. In the first game, there are a couple places where characters can die. Some of them are not really avoidable, but regardless, most of the story will take place about the same if I were to go down one line or the other. At the end of the first game, though, uh, we defeat Saren. We uncover that there is a much bigger thing coming, which is the Reapers, which leads us into Mass Effect 2. A lot of people will say that Mass Effect 2 is the best of the trilogy, and I totally understand that, because that's the suicide mission. The suicide mission is basically, I collect so many companion characters, because I've got to go through this Omega Relay to try to stop the Reaper invasion. So we've got to collect all of these characters so that we can go and stop them. But we don't expect that anybody's coming back from this. Mass Effect 2 is also the place where more of your actions have consequences. But it's not necessarily Renegade and Paragon, because it's more about doing the loyalty missions for your characters and preparing ahead of time. And if you're not preparing ahead of time, if you're not getting the upgrades that you need for your ship, if you're not uh, you know, doing all the loyalty missions so that everybody in your crew is prepared, if you're not dealing with the, the other like sub-conflicts that are, that are going on, then you're not really going to be prepared to go through that relay and take on the, the big bads of this chapter. And so you're really encouraged to go through all of that. And if you don't do that preparation, you can expect a lot of losses of a bunch of characters that you've already been on this trip with. And there's like 12 companion characters, some returning from the previous game, and they make it very clear in Mass Effect 2 that all of them can die. There's even some playthroughs that you could have where you could have everybody in your crew get killed off before the end. You can even die in this one, although it kind of is going to hurt when you try to get to the third installment. But you could technically do that. You could technically have a playthrough where you live and Everybody else dies. All like all of the other companion characters die. That's a possibility that can happen. I will say that the start of two is a total fake out. And we have to call that out. It starts with Shepard dying in space. That's where it starts. Then Cerberus, who's essentially a terrorist agency. Decides to bring Shepard back. Shepard's coming back, guys. We need Shepard uh, to defeat the Reapers. Now you're working for Cerberus instead of working uh, for the, the Citadel. And so 
you're on the the opposite side of things. And Cerberus is never really a trustworthy organization. I don't know why Shepard would think that they are, except that really at that point in time, no one has any interest in defeating the Reapers or even thinks that it's a real threat besides Cerberus. And that's interesting, right? Because, like, Shepard had already dealt with Sovereign and Saren in the first game, so they should already be aware of it. But it seems to be one of those cases where a lot of the galaxy just kind of tuned it out and was like, eh, it probably wasn't the Reapers, it was probably something else, yada, 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 move on with the rest of our lives. So Shepard's now going to kind of the seedy underside of the galaxy, and that's where you get introduced to Omega, which is like the, the crime planet or the crime installation, and you meet Arya Talok, and you meet all of these criminal organizations that are under the surface of this world. And it feels dirtier, you know, grimier. You're really in the skunk works of this galaxy, and there's something kind of neat about that. There's something that really has meat on the bones when you're playing it, and I enjoyed that uh, a lot. You eventually get to the suicide mission, and in similar fashion to the first time that I played through, I wanted to make sure to get everybody's loyalty missions in. I wanted to make sure to do it in a, a good, timely fashion. I wanted to make sure that I got all the right upgrades, and my goal was to make sure that everybody made it through, and they did. Although, I don't necessarily think that if you're playing this for the first time, you need to worry too much about it, because there are some interesting story beats uh, that are going to come to fruition, depending on who lives and who dies. Uh, but I liked having everybody live. You also get to see what happens to them in three, because anyone who did live will have at least a small part to play in the third installment. So... So I wanted to make sure everybody lived, uh, at least so that we could get to Part 3. And when we start Mass Effect 3, it becomes very obvious to the entirety of the galaxy that the Reapers are not only a real threat, but they are here. They attack Earth. Commander Shepard gets out of there as quickly as possible during the evacuation and has to now go to find out how the rest of the galaxy is faring, what's happening to all of these alien races, and how to get them on board with an all-out attack on the Reapers, how to get as many war assets as you can, because that's the main thing that you do in 3. And the neat thing that they do in Mass Effect 3 is they try to wrap up these very old conflicts. What happened with the Krogan genophage? Can it be cured now? What happened with the conflict between the Geth and the Corians? These very big things that happened thousands of years ago in some cases, what happened with the Protheans, the, the legacy of it, everything. All of this stuff has to get resolved in this third game. It's not just that the Reapers happen. All of these big, overarching problems have to be resolved as well. Is it more than they really had to do? Maybe. But at least it gives characters some motivation, and I think it gives closure to the fact that this really is the third installment and the last installment, and there'll never be another Mass Effect after this, that this is going to be the wrap-up of this trilogy and put really a, a nice bow on top of everything. So you're going around collecting war assets and trying to get everybody on board and deal with these, you know, generations-long conflicts between different species out there in the galaxy. And in the meantime, you're being haunted by this image. You're running through this forest in your dreams uh, and trying to grab the hand of this boy who you couldn't save when you left Earth. The, 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 the boy was getting on a shuttle. You saw, saw him get onto the shuttle and left, 
And then the Reapers blew that shuttle out of the sky and killed everybody on board. And so this is now the thing that haunts you throughout the entirety of the game. It's a very powerful piece of storytelling that they do. Right up until the end, where the boy becomes basically the hologram that explains to you your choices. It does a good job of wrapping that up, and then there's also a piece of DLC, one of the best pieces of DLC called uh, Citadel, which is just fun. It's just fun because it lets you and your entire crew basically go on this little mission to stop your doppelganger, and then you have a nice little party, and you talk to everybody before you go off for your final mission. And it's a nice little wrap-up, mostly for Shepard, to spend a little bit more time with all the other characters in some regular day-to-day -day life. Because as you start to get toward the end, it becomes a little clearer that Shepard is not making it through this. And this is where one of the biggest criticisms of Mass Effect comes in. The ending. And it's warranted. Even now. At the end of this game, after making all of these decisions that felt like they had weight or should have had weight, what happens with the Rachni, which is this you know, insectoid species that they fought an entire war against and was thought wiped out of existence but weren't. What happened with them? What, what happened with everybody? You've made all of these decisions. They had a weight to them. They had consequences. But you get to the end of the game, and it basically becomes a choose-your-own-adventure novel where you are given three different options. And those options are that you can blow everything up, Basically, you just destroy all the Reapers, but it's actually going to destroy all artificial life, which means that the Geth are also going to die, the robots are going to die, everybody uh, that, that isn't an organic is basically going to be dead. You can take command of the Reapers and control them yourself as like the hive mind for them. Or, if you've gotten enough war assets together, you take what is, I guess, considered to be the actual good true ending, which is synergy. And that basically means that organics and uh, artificial life forms kind of merge, and a little bit of the, the organic part goes into the artificial life and, and a little bit of, like, artificiality, a little bit of, like, the, the nano circuitry goes into all organic life in the galaxy. And, and this synergizes everybody uh, so that they can work in harmony. These are basically the three options that you have. Although, there is a fourth one, which is sort of just like a, a snarky one, where you just say, I don't want to do anything, and you just let the Reapers destroy everybody. Um... That's obviously not a real choice. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that Shepard would ever do that. But they add it in as like, uh, maybe you just want to give the middle finger to the galaxy. Why, why you would have gone through all of this to do that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But those are the three options that you're presented with. And in basically all three of these, Shepard dies. Your main character, the character that you've played for three games, is going to die. And then the game shows you, essentially, the legacy of what you did. And that's fine. I think that that's perfectly fine. But the thing that bothered a lot of players, and I totally understand this criticism, is that you've gone through this game making all of these choices. But at the end of the day... Scrap all of that, because at the very end, you still just get to choose one of three paths. You didn't have to do a certain series of things to get a specific ending. You just get to the end, choose a path, and go with it. Imagine that. Imagine if you could go through a whole lifetime of choices, and then when you hit, like, 30 years old, they say, okay, well, 
forget all of that. Now here's three paths you can take. Just pick one. That was a real deflating experience for me. Which is unfortunate because the way the game is structured, the way they do the storyline in the game, the way they do character development, the writing, and especially in the trilogy edition, the, the legendary edition, the way that they were able to upgrade the graphics and the design, and it feels so much more cinematic, especially the older games now. They do such a good job at production, and they do such a good job at really fleshing out this world and making it feel real. And then at the end, to kind of just punt it and say, yeah, walk down one of these three hallways, it takes a little bite out of the whole experience, you know? And that's unfortunate. But even saying that, I do believe that the Mass Effect trilogy is a seminal experience. One that I would encourage people to try for themselves. Uh, I would normally give another suggestion for a game, but I, I don't really think I want to because there really isn't anything quite like the Mass Effect trilogy. We don't usually see games that decide to take three whole installments to tell an overarching storyline. Um, this doesn't happen very much, so there's not a lot that I can compare it to. I could try to compare it to other space games, or maybe to other, like, action RPGs, but I don't think that it's right to do so. Mass Effect Trilogy is three very distinct games that have some unique systems all their own, especially with, like, weapon upgrades and how they handle character development and the different crew and, and places that you go. But it is a very standalone sort of experience. I would suggest that playing through the three of them together, and in something like the Legendary Edition, where you get to, you know, actually experience transfer from the first one to the second one to the third one, which wasn't as doable because they originally came out over some console generations, so transferring your data from, like, the first game to the second game was, was especially uh, tricky, a little easier from second to third. But anyway, the point is, being able to do them now and play them as one piece of media that spans three different games, I think is a, a very interesting experience if you care about, you know, sort of like the, the ins and outs of video games. If you don't just care about playing the games for the sake of playing games and having fun, which is perfectly fine if you like that, I like that, but if, if you like looking at games media in terms of the, the art and the vision of it and what it can be it cinematically, I think that playing the trilogy start to finish is not just good to explain story development and character development, but also you get to see the mechanics of it change throughout those three games, where they start to add in like the second installment uh, quick time decisions for uh, your light side and dark side mechanics, uh, where they change how you do gear upgrades, where it's not just purchasing them and then putting some mods on them in the first game, the second one where they just do some basic upgrades, and then the third one where you can fully, like, modify out your your gear. Doing those different kinds of things, you get to see the evolution of these systems, how they utilize the Normandy and the galaxy map and what you do on those galaxy maps. All of that is very interesting to see from 1 to 2 to 3, and I would encourage people to try it for themselves if you get the chance. Okay, so uh, this has been a long time in the making. In fact, I had originally recorded another video about this before I decided to do Space Sember, and then I decided, well, it's been too long, and I don't even remember what I said in that, but I will probably be throwing what I had originally up on uh, our Patreon if anybody cares about it over there, but um, I, I think this is a little bit shorter and easier to digest than that one. I, I think that one's more like an hour long. 
Uh, so we'll just we'll just go with this. Just this is good. We're good. I finally did it. Yay! Finally did the Mass Effect trilogy. Woohoo! What will be next? Who, who even knows anymore? <laughs> Thank you for coming along with me on this journey. There is a spaceship over in the corner. It may look like a mine cart, because it is. It will fly, sort of. Depends how fast you're going. I'm not an engineer. I... Bye. Bye.